Now let's tackle a long section on account management, billing, and support. And we will be starting with AWS organizations. So it's a very simple service, it's a global service, and the idea is that by creating an organization, you're able to manage multiple AWS accounts. The main account is going to be called the master account, and all the other ones will be called child, uh, child accounts. The cost benefits you get from using an organization is that you get consolidated billing. That means that all the accounts will be paid by just the master account, and so you will have one long bill at the end. So you don't need to set up a payment method for all the other accounts. The other thing is that you get pricing benefits from aggregated usage. So when you use a lot EC2, or when you use a lot S3, you get a discount because you've used that a lot. And so if you have multiple accounts, you could lose that volume. But with an organization, because the billing is consolidated, the aggregated usage is as well consolidated, and that means that you get more discounts. Also, if you're using reserved instances, they're shared across all the accounts to make sure that if one account does not use a reserved instance, another one can. And again, maximize the cost savings. There's an API that is available to automate AWS account creation to do so automatically, which is very helpful. For example, if you had some processes to create an account programmatically for someone, for as an example, a sandbox account. And then finally, you can restrict account privileges using a service control policy or SCP, and that is a common exam question. So all the things highlighted in bold in this slide are going to be common exam questions. Now I'm going to go a bit deeper on organization. So you can have a multi-account strategy in AWS. That means that you want to create accounts, for example, per department, per cost center, per environment, for example, dev, test and prod based on regulatory restrictions. For example, if you don't want a service to be used in an account, you can use an SCP. Or if you want to isolate the resources better, you could have different VPC in different accounts. And it's also very good to have separate per account service limits and also isolated accounts for logging. So all these could be multi-account strategies. It's really up to each organization to choose what type of accounts they want. So the idea is that you have two options. You can use multi-account or one account and multiple VPC. That is a trade-off. I personally like the multi-account better. You can use tagging standards across all the accounts for billing purposes, and we'll see billing in depth in the section. And you should enable CloudTrail on all the accounts, send the logs to a central S3 account, and also as well for the CloudWatch logs, you should send them all to a central logging account. So how can you organize your accounts? Well, you can organize them by business units, for example, with a master account, and then we have the sales OU, we have the retail OU and the finance OU, and within each OU, so each organizational unit, you'll have multiple accounts, or you can organize them by environment, production, development, and tests, or we can have them project-based, for example, project one, project two, project three, or a mix of all these things. Okay, so an organization looks like this. The root OU contains everything. It contains the master account, and then you can create a different OU. So the dev OU, maybe with two accounts in it, the prod OU with two accounts in it, and within the prod OU, you can also have different OU. So a finance OU and an HR OU with their respective accounts. Hope that makes sense. There is something called a service control policy or SCP. It allows you to whitelist or blacklist IAM actions applied at the OU or account level, but it doesn't apply to the master account. The SCPs have no effects on the master account. So the SCPs, we'll see an example very shortly, they can be applied to only the users and the roles of the account, including a root. So if you apply an SCP onto your account within an OU and you say you cannot use EC2, even an admin within that account cannot use EC2. But the SCP does not apply to service linked roles. So this is the service roles that other services use to integrate with organizations. Okay, SCP must have an explicit allow to allow things. So by default, it does not allow anything. And so use cases for SCP, and this is what the exam will test you on, would be to restrict access to certain services. For example, you're saying, okay, in my production accounts, you cannot use EMR, or to enforce PCI compliance by explicitly disabling services that are not compliant with PCI yet in AWS. So I'll try to make this a little bit clearer. Let's have a look at our OU. So we have the root OU with a root account, a production OU with an account A in it, and with an HROU with account B, and a finance OU with account C. So let's assume that you usually do this. On the root OU, you add an SCP called full AWS access, which tells that every services and every action can be done, basically allowing you to use your account. But let's apply a deny access Athena SCP onto the master account. 
Now, what can the master account do or cannot do? Well, the master account can do anything because it inherited the full AWS Access SCP from the root OU. And even though we have attached a deny access Athena SCP to the master account, because it is the master account of your root OU, no SCP apply. And therefore, this SCP with apply to the master account is completely not taken into account. So to summarize, we've inherited stuff from the root OU and the SCP applied to the master account to deny anything does not apply. Now let's go on. We have a deny redshift SCP that is applied to the prod OU and an authorized redshift SCP applied to the account A. So now about account A, it can do anything because you have full access SCP, but it cannot access redshift because there is a deny redshift SCP applied to the prod OU. And even though I have attached an authorized Redshift SCP to my account A, because we have an explicit deny on Redshift at the OU level, the deny is going to take precedence over the authorize. So even though I have this authorized Redshift SCP on account A, actually that authorize is useless because we already have a deny at the OU level. So it's interesting for you to know that this is a full tree. And so account A is going to inherit the SCP at its level, at the OU level, and even the roots of the OU. So it goes like a tree. And so if one of these says deny, then it's going to be a deny. Now let's look at HRU. It has a deny AWS Lambda SCP. And so what about account B? Well, it can do anything because of the full access, but it cannot access Redshift because it's within the prod OU. It's the bigger OU. And also it cannot access AWS Lambda because it's within the HR OU. So account C though in finance OU is not affected by this deny AWS Lambda SCP because it's only applied to the HRU but not the finance OU. And therefore, account C has the exact same permission as account A, which is to do anything but access Redshift. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. If you understand this, you've basically understood SCP and their power. So let's take an example of what it looks like. An SCP looks just like AIM policy. So this is allow all actions. So we allow star on star. So do you say you can do anything but deny DynamoDB? And we're saying the effect is deny on DynamoDB star for any resource. Another strategy would be to whitelist only a certain type of services. So we're saying allow EC2 star and CloudWatch star on resource star, but any other services but EC2 and CloudWatch cannot be usable. If you don't know exactly what this means, you want more examples, there's a link right here that takes you to the documentation and shows you different OUs, uh, SCPs you can have. So that's it for organizations. I hope you liked it. And in the next lecture, I'm going to do an optional walkthrough organization. It's a bit more complicated. So I would just recommend if you just want to, to just watch me do and see how I use organization to demonstrate the creation of accounts and to demonstrate as well the use of SCP. So I hope you like this and I will see you in the next lecture.